It's just us and a fake exactly. moon. Please, yeah. speak. Thank you. I think Germans always go for, for a head-on collision. You know, and, and it, it's never, it's, it doesn't, it rarely has sort of grace and melody and rhythm. It's just the... <laughs>
and effective reading agreement. I talked about this agreement with Laszlo Ungwari as the president of TH Wildo as earlier of 2014, but Professor Ungwari had serious problems with his health and he was between life and death and he went through series of operations during that year, summer and autumn. And for this reason, the final agreement signed at the end of 2014. And despite that, we entered a contractual relationship with a German state-owned university. We had good reasons to distrust them. The most significant evidence of this is you can clearly recognize that this agreement has signed and stamped at both pages. I think this is not a friendly attitude toward to a German state institution, but it expressed how I feared from the frequency from this German school, Teach Wildo. Have you remembered the contract between my company and this German state school, TH Wildau, from 2014? The most important elements of this agreement were Number one, we as the agent, we are working to promote, build, represent and manage the business of TH Wildau with Chinese local universities, local governments, institutes, enterprise and individual partners, which means their university handed over all these rights to my company. Obligations from our side were Number one, we must act within the legal frame of local laws and regulations in People Republic of China. Number two, to promote the study and the training programs of TH Wildo in People's Republic China. Continuously. Number three, we were obligated to find new business opportunities for them. Number four, provide information for them. Number five, we should act by the guidance of them and German Federal Republic Ministry of Education and Research, which in other names BMBF. Meanwhile, their obligations were number one, provide actual and updated marketable and attractive study training programs for my company for the Chinese market. Number two, they were obligated to support my company technically and provide all necessary information. Number three, they were obligated to support my company financially if we are delegated by them to manage and develop specific cases. Number four, they must not involve any third party to represent the same content written in the goals and objectives except if we as agent giving our consent by reading. Number five, Consideration. They agreed to pay commissions to my company according to a separate agreement by Reden. And this contract may be terminated before the expiry date by two modes. The first one was mutual consent. Both parties agreed to end the current contract by Reden. And the second one was if the agent works directly against local laws or regulations of the People's Republic of China. With this contract, they should inform us about all of their running projects in China and without our reading consent, they should terminate all of their cooperations with Chinese partners. This includes their running cooperation in Hangzhou, Chongqing, Beijing and anywhere in China. And it's important to remark that this contract was not signed secretly. I sent the draft of the agreement to the president of TH Wilda, Professor Ungwari. He had all the time in the world to review this important agreement or show it to his law expert like his deputy Professor Peter York. And just to show how I was in good faith with this German school, I even translated the draft into the Hungarian language just to let Professor Ungwari to know what exactly he is undersigning. 
because he was good in Russian, German, and Hungarian languages, but not in English. And in 2014, there were several business requests from China. And one request came from our business partner, who is a lawyer of Dendon's American law firm. A Chinese businessman wanted to receive representative rights from the German Porsche Group. They had a 10 million Chinese yuan in the bank account to arrange this business. So I talked about this business opportunity with Professor Umwari, and he claimed that he has a good connection with the car industry of Germany. And I had reasons to believe him because they must have connected with German car companies. And in one of his messages, he even claimed that to arrange this business, he needs to nominate one of the big Porsche bosses as TH Weirdo Honorary Doctors. I was really happy about it because it seemed that it's a German thing and one of the big Porsche bosses is willing to make a deal with our partners. And because from 2014, November 5, we are already the official agent of this German school, so we even had the obligation to find business opportunities for their school. The stake was big. It's about 3 million Chinese yuan for my company. If we can help them to arrange these rights from the German Porsche Group. Meanwhile, the president of TH Weirdo could become official advisor for this private Chinese company with a 5,000 euro per month honorarium. And I really don't know whether it has connected with the president's summer autumn surgical intervention, but before he arrived in China, he messaged me about Violai taking to a Chinese master's salon when his colleague and his vice president, Professor York Peter, is not there. I almost got a cold shock. Prostitution in China is illegal. He asked me to arrange a thing which may end up in a Chinese jail for up to 15 days. Have you remembered what I mentioned in part one? And if this is not enough, some weeks after, he sent me a message again, which is about he wants to be sure that a 5,000 euro cash will be waiting for him in China. And the reason for this is because he is in need. In 2014, when Professor Unguari and Professor York arrived in China Kunming, I put 5,000 euro cash in Professor Unguari's hand. And I told him, when you return to Germany, you do what you want, but not here in China. Because of I couldn't trust these Germans won't do any illegal things, I was the driver for him and his vice president during their visit. I really feared that these two Germans would make something illegal, and in the end, they get me into trouble. And Professor Unguari, as the president of TH Wilde and also as the Porsche representative person, went to meet our business partners. He signed as the advisor for the Chinese company. I tried my best to arrange some programs for them just to let this visit finish fast. And here, let me remark, maybe it's because in my childhood, I received a Christian education. And I have to say, I just never wished to visit the German massage salon when I was in Berlin. From that moment, I really started to rethink whether my company should keep this business relationship with TH Wirdo as a state university in Germany. Chancellor Merkel here or there, the way how these Germans make businesses is just too disgusting for me. I actually started to imagine if a German public university's president starts to do this, then how Chancellor Merkel was doing her business anyway. Nevertheless, it's just the beginning of my company's cooperation with this German state-funded institution. But I think if then Umwari could arrange this Porsche business for me, I may end this business relationship Germans very soon. After this Chinese visit, 
I never heard anything from Ungwari about his big boss Porsche friend and I started to feel that I'm dealing not with professor doctors but with a bunch of criminals. Meanwhile, Ungwari acted as this case has never happened. I had to give an explanation to Denton's lawyer and this Chinese company. And I can say that actually the Angela Merkel's colleague, Professor Ungwari, is a scammer because it will kill my company. After this case, inside me, all those legends about strict, high quality European Germany are gone. And just let you know how flippant was this school's German professor doctors. Under this Chinese visit in 2014, I took Ungwari and York to a Chinese university in the city of Nanchang. Meanwhile, I was deadly serious as the representative of this German state university. I even asked a Chinese school to place a big German flag during the meeting. This Ungwari and his deputy Jörg started to make jokes with the Chinese school's communist secretary about does he knows Bavaria is actually not a part of Germany because they come from Berlin and they are the true Germans. The communist secretary looked at me with an embarrassing smile as he wanted to say where these monkeys come from. And slowly more surprise came into my face as earlier as 2015 with one email I have mentioned it to his colleague which is a private company in Berlin and worked as a right hand for Professor Ungwari. I mentioned to him that from 2014 we entered into a contractual relationship with TH Wilder. But surprisingly Mr. Ingo Eric Smith in one email asked me to show this contract because as he said he knows nothing about it. My mind was blowing and the nightmare for my private company has just started. What do you think what it feels like to do business with a German state-funded university? It's like this or it's like this? In part 3, it will be revealed. I don't know what grievances you are talking about. What we could do was receive groups and more. There were no other specific requests from you. We did everything we could within the legal framework. Unfortunately, your performance here also caused displeasure in Claudia. Therefore, you won't be able to lay the groundwork for future collaboration with the new leadership. Professor Dr. Uwai Laszlo, 2017. So you already know that this Professor Dr. Uwari as the president of the German State Funded University, TH Lirda, wished to visit a Chinese master salon during an official visit. And you also know that he said he has a good friend in Porsche. So let's go back to 2015. We arrived in the first year of our new cooperation when the new basis for our cooperation is laid in a written agreement. At the time, I didn't even know why, but this Ungwari had started sending me various projects from his alleged friends. These friends come from Kazakhstan and Russia. While he knew that I don't have too much positive emotions towards former Soviet countries, but he keep sending me various business offers. He said these were very good business opportunities, but in the meantime, he said nothing about the written agreement between my company and his German state-funded 
university many times is said on the phone that these offers can be monetized and are very good business deal. Despite it, at the time, I had seen quite a lot from this German state-funded institute. It was still new for me as Ungwari as a president of a German university using his official email to forward offers from various private foreign businessmen to me. And I was only slowly recovering from last year's Porsche case and I slowly noticed that these projects are worthless garbages and Ungwari is just using them as an excuse to waste time because he couldn't deliver on the contract. A year later, Ungwari admits in one of his official email that he cannot and does not want to fulfill the commitments made in this agreement until his re-election. But let's not run so far ahead of time. So I have noticed since 2015 that there are tremendous personal conflicts exist in this German state-funded institute. Ungwari forbade me to contact his deputy Peter Yu because he described him as an idiot with problems in his head. And anyway, he didn't suggest me to contact anyone at this university in Germany because as he described, there are many complete idiots, others are corrupt and Worst of all, there are a lot of crazy Nazis in Wildau. Meanwhile, in front of me, his deputy described Ungwari as a nobody and saying that he is a kind of flying professor. And I have no reason to take him serious. In the meantime, not surprisingly, the relationship between Ungwari and his right hand, the private company's owner, Mr. Ingo Smith, also deteriorated because he was appointed my company as the exclusive representative of TH Wildo. Meanwhile, he was supposed to have a valid contract with his right hand, Mr. Ingo, that was also valid for China. And at the same time, the vice president of TH Wildo, Peter Yerk, also had problems with Mr. Ingo. He described him as a dictator. The whole situation was as crazy as one of the scenes in the movie Roadhouse, mixed with hateful hate. In one of the emails, I, as the head of the private company, had to write a warning to the professor, Dr. Ugwari, as a German public university's president, who also had a working relationship with Chancellor Merkel, that he should take a written agreement seriously, and I expect a professional attitude and focus from him. Many times I had a feeling that I was dealing with an alcoholic person and this Germany in my eyes lost 70% of its reputation because I felt that despite they have such high and well sounding titles as professor, doctors, their behaviors are not better than any Uger bastard that I have ever met in my life. Just to describe how crazy were the situation then, in the summer of 2015, Ungwari sent one Russian team to China as exam inspectors. He had previously introduced Russians as cigar traders and investors. So because of this action of Ungwari, I got phone calls from my Chinese partners nervously asking me that after all, is this a German university or a Russian university? I I felt so embarrassed that I almost joked with him that Russian Prussian almost the same. It turned out that these Russians started promoting their cigars in China in front of the exam kids and the teachers of their. Incidentally, these Russians pretended to be the official Chinese agent of this German university. In one email from 2015, I sent the complaint to Ungwari and unfortunately he showed no remorse just as Russian cigar traders and German state-funded university are the two most natural things in the world. I seriously felt myself like a master shooter in a movie called Cigari and who was always had to be ready because there were so many bad bastards around me who were always ready to take away my contractual rights. Mm -hmm. Huh? Huh? 
puta paisana. Quiere morir. And also from 2015, Uwari started explaining to me that he is actually my best choice in Germany and asked me to not contact anyone at this university, even if he often couldn't answer my questions for a month long. And he also started saying that he was facing an election campaign and various investigations are going on in TH Wilda. So as soon as these things are completed, very huge business will wait for me. But in the meantime, he also pointed out that I should not take a written agreement too seriously because things are not going that way in Germany. As he described in Germany, a written agreement is not a sacred thing, but rather a kind of formality meaning it doesn't obligate anyone in order to keep a written commitment it is necessary to make key people interested in it and he said openly that the money which he asked from me is very reasonable because these amounts are drops in the sea the other germans are much worse than him and from 2015 when was hungry as a wolf, he wanted to collect money from me for any reason, like receive a delegation or a group of student visitors from China, or commissions for their language program organized by an external company of his right hand, Mr. Eric Ingo Smith from EBA Network. I felt that this Umbari was no longer just a white collar criminal, but rather a kind of pimp as a movie character whose name is Lupo from the movie of Kiss of the Dragon and he considered this university like his whore and her time is my money you've kept it busy for 20 minutes do you know the going rate for 20 minutes no 500 francs and this Ungwari had a kind of antisocial behavior as well because he always proudly said that his phone was paid by German taxpayers and that travel is paid by German taxpayers and he was always very proud of it. He found joy in spending taxpayers' money. It was disgusting for me, but as a business owner, my task was to generate profit for my company and I had nothing to do with judging how sociopaths these upper-class Germans were. And also from 2015, I tried to find other players in this TH Wilda because I saw this cooperation as a cooperation between my company and the German state-funded institute. No matter how many times Umbari told me that I should avoid other Germans because they are much worse than him, I still tried my best to find other partners. Because of Umbari, in my heart was an aberrant pimp, so I was thinking in 2015 that I could just find some normal German at this university who takes a written agreement as a sacred thing. I tried to contact many professors like Peter Jürg, Stefan Strassner and various TH Wilda international office workers. I have to say, slowly I had to figure it out what Umbari told me might be the truth. So I'm starting with this figure named Strassner who was sent out to China as an exchange professor. I tried to ask him how will they fulfill the agreement but in one of his emails this Strassner specifically recommended me a Chinese university with the purpose of recruiting students for Germany for him. I started to understand why Umbari described Strassner also as a dumb figure and I had this president deputy Peter Yu who allegedly is a law expert and also teaches about business law. Meanwhile he knew that TH Wildau as a German state-funded university transferred its representation rights to my company. In front of me, he always liked to mention how they perform separate actions with China, just as he wanted to show me how he promptly breaches written agreement and showing me that he is enjoying to breach it. In one of the letters, which from Peter Yu, he openly states that if I have a problem with the contract performance, I have to solve my problems with Umbari. As if this contract was not signed by my company and their German state-funded institute, but as a private person, 
with another private person. I also try to establish contact with colleagues in the Teach Rivers International Office and one time I asked them to answer my questions and surprisingly the answer came from Mr. Ingo Eric Smith as a private company in Berlin. The chaos that was at this German state university was simply indescribable. How can a person teaches business law if he himself does not even recognize that he represents an institution in Germany and not a private person. I constantly had a feeling that I would have done better if I had signed an agreement with Juarez Carter instead of this German state-funded school in Wildau. In 2016, I invited Peter Jörg to have a lunch with me in Wildau. As a businessman, I wanted to assess my chances of convincing them to honor our written agreement. I informed Ungwari that I was going to meet his vice president. He immediately took this as if I had committed a betrayal against him. He described why I want to meet with this town. I ignored Ungwari. This lunch came together at a Thai restaurant in Wildau and Peter Jörg started talking to me about all kinds of things, telling me that their president Umwari is an unbearable figure here at university and can't wait for his resignation. He described Umwari as a too legit clown and flying professor and he suggested that I need to meet the next presidential candidate named Ulrich Dippe. And as Peter Jörg said, if I want to ensure that the cooperation between our company and the university will be maintained, then I need to have a personal relationship with this new candidate. He offered me to meet Ulrich, but he didn't know that what was in my head that the last thing in the world I wanted was to meet another German professor and start the devil's circle again. I had already enough with Uvali. I had no desire to listen things like reading agreements are not taken seriously in Germany because that requires to make certain people interested. As a result of this meeting, I had no longer hopes to find a normal partner in this school and I would have to end this cooperation by mutual consent. On April 29 of 2016, I wrote the first time to Brandenburg Ministry of Education, asking them to intervene because we simply can't receive our contractual rights with this German state-funded university. And they probably called Ungwari, and Ungwari immediately called me. He was scared and promised on the phone that he would remedy the matter and fulfill the commitments made in this contract. But I had already indicated in an email that this agreement was not concluded between private individuals, and I want to receive my company's contractual rights. I pointed out that he did not inform us of their actions in China. Meanwhile, the right of representation of TH Weirdo was in my company's hand. Under this agreement, I complained that there is no concept and we are wasting our time unnecessarily with meaningless things. I hope that after writing this letter, Bungwari would propose that we end this cooperation by mutual consent in accordance with the agreement because I kept sending him the complaints. I asked him to fulfill his German state-funded institute contractual obligations and not waste our time. Umwari in one of the emails from 2016 was forced to admit that this University of Wildo is in such chaos as I described earlier to him. In this email, he claimed until the court of auditors withdraws from him and until he is re-elected, he will not be able to fulfill the contractual obligations in this agreement. And he threatened me that if he won't be there as president, I may stay without a partner. He is exactly asking me to tolerate my losses during the non-performance of the contract. I think, in other words, it called extortion. A 
few weeks later, I told him again that it would be better if with mutual consent, but we end this cooperation. I described to him that they were unable to fulfill any of their commitments in the contract, and I have indicated to him that I felt that this weirdo was more like a type of sit-out wallet, and he, instead of being very outraged, and started a termination talk with me, he wrote to me in his short email that to argument about these seemingly legal things is unnecessary. So he had no problems that I have described his German university as a type of sit-out whoever place. It's like he just said to me, yes, we are criminals and so what? might be when Hyman Rose tries to talk business with Pennywise. Well, if you do business with a German state-funded institution and German government, be prepared for the most absurd situations in your life. This country must be a mad joke. If they did this with each other within the border of Germany, it then might be okay. But the problem of here is we bearing the losses because they don't know what seriousness, laws and the regulations are. In 2012, as a partner of a German state-funded university, TH Wildau, I visited a private school in Beijing to promote the German's academic program. And here, one young lady asked me, is Germany a Nazi-type country? At that time, I thought she is just too stupid. How can she ask a question like this? But after eight years, I started to rethink her question. Everything we have done within the legal framework. I must remind you about this. Let's do not forget that Professor Ungwari was not only worked together with Chancellor Merkel, but also with Steinmeier. By the way, he also visited the President of Hungary And allegedly, Umwari also met Vladimir Putin of Russia and also met Queen Elizabeth II of England. So if he said that everything we have done within the legal framework, will you believe him? Including that, he asked me to break our contractual obligations and arrange him a visit to a Chinese massage salon in the People's Republic of China. Or that he demanded money from me with a German state-funded institution email, which powered by Association for the Promotion of a German Research Network. Or that he falsely claimed that one of his friends in Porsche is a great boss and he he will appoint this boss as honorary doctors in exchange to arrange a half of million euro business for my company. I have no doubt that Ungwari represents Germany because Germany pays him, German authorities approved him. No matter how incredible his words were, I had to believe that in Germany this can be unquestionably legal. After 2016, I was forced to keep me together with this German state-funded university. I was disgusted by all the figures there. They don't know what a reading agreement means, they don't know what contractual partners mean, and they continue to do sickly their own business while watching the valid agreement as air. 
the German state institution, leaders, signatures, and seals mean a piece of shit. Ungwari pretended that this agreement doesn't even exist, and also he doesn't think it's worth arguing about legal issues, because for him, those are just seemingly things. Because as he told me in Germany, it is normal if you pay cash into the pockets of officials, without that, business won't work. That would be the normality in the democratic and rule of law Germany. And his colleagues were not better than him in any level because Ungwari signed the agreement in the name of the German state-funded institution. But these German professor doctors figures translated it as Ungwari signed the deal in the name of himself. I have had experience with those Chinese people who are living in China and they can counterfeit anything to make profit and money. And they don't give a damn about intellectual properties or fair games. But the fact that in a German state-funded institution, they would have approached to a written agreement in such brutal way, I never thought this could happen. I, as a businessman, suffered the images mentally because these Germans took the belief away from me that a business could be conducted here in Europe normally and without those insane level of corruption. And in principle, Europe and North America are the brightest part of this world with democracy, free speech, but what I have experienced is a brutal, raw, inhuman system. In 2017, I found out all of our partners are tired and I was exhausted from this mad brute Germany as well. Despite that, in my hand, I had a valid contract with a German state-funded institution and I was full with German professor doctors. I knew in my heart that I would have done much better if I had done business with an illiterate villager. In the summer of 2017, Ungwari came to Hungary and I invited him to a Chinese restaurant here in Budapest. And I told him that it's time to composite my company for the non-performance of the cooperation contract, whether he will stay as president or not. I warned him that a written agreement is a sacred thing and I wasn't polite to him. I told him that if he and his German state-funded institution start to breach a written agreement and expect that wouldn't affect them, he is badly wrong. And I asked him to write an open public tender. We would be happy to operate representative offices for TH Wilda in Guming and Hangzhou. And the 1 million euro operating cost should be paid by the German state-funded institution. I told him that this would be the most elegant way to finish the previous year's madness. Ungwari said that this would be okay, and by the way, he said that he would most likely stay as the university's president for some more years. And he did not forget what he promised to me in 2016. And after his re-election, then he will get rid of his vice president colleagues who had just harmed him. And just to imagine how this German state-funded institution was brutal madly managed, in a sense, some weeks after from the Budapest lunch, Ungwari suddenly informed me about from 2017 a new colleague named Claudia is responsible for the language courses which was managed years long by Mr. Ingo from EBA Networks. You know, this is the company that had the right to give guidance to the official Teach Wilder workers. And Ungwari did forget to mention this when he enjoyed the Chinese food in Budapest. Meanwhile, he also forgot to inform this new colleague, Claudia, that by the way, my company and I were responsible for their German state-funded institution operations in the People's Republic of China. And after three years from the agreement signing, I had to send T.H. Wildau and my company's contract to a T.H. Wildau's worker again. I can't beautify the situation that has happened in the last three years. I think it completely exhausted the 
concept of fraud, and the fraud was committed collectively by a German state-funded institution. And my company was just writing a mad story for this modern Germany after the Volkswagen scandal. A little later, I sent him the draft which he previously agreed and would have expected him to write his opinion. But Ungwari did not give any answer, and it seemed to me that he changed his mind again. For me, his mind operated like casino roulette. He no longer wants to remember that we had an agreement here in the summer, and of course, he also forget that in 2016 he promised me in an official email that after his election campaign, everything that didn't fulfill will be fulfilled. And damn it, it seemed I wasted. Three years from my life with who is Germans, who West Germans, how a Bavarian is not a German. Just the problem is it had nothing to do with business. Because it had nothing to do with business. Just this flippant German professor doctors unable to figure it out that they are. Playing with a German state-funded institution's reputation. So not long after, I emailed him that our 2014 contract badly breached and we should negotiate what to do. But it turned out that this Ungwari is just as eager as he showed himself earlier. Until the taxpayers pay him, he tries to take some responsibility. But if he no longer stay in Position. He immediately overturned the table. Since he could no longer remain as president of a German state-funded institution, Ungwari no longer wants to play the civilized person. I doubt that a new president who is a German woman couldn't be worse than Ungwari. Therefore, at the end of 2017, I wrote my company's letter to all the three German vice presidents. In it, I listed what they didn't fulfill according to the agreement, and of course, I expressed that we do not insist continue the partnership, but we ask to start a negotiation about our losses. Our negotiation partner. Could be anyone except Ungwari, because as I described, Ungwari suffering some memory loss. And surprisingly, none of the three German vice presidents was capable of writing an email response. So good faith is also an unknown concept to them. And what could I do? I can give you a ride to Bell's little diner about five miles down the road. They got a payphone. You call a tow truck. <laughs> I turned to their superior body, Brandenburg Ministry of Culture and Education. Here, relatively soon, a written response came from the department head named Dr. Nicole Muni. She asked me to be a little bit patient because at the moment the university is under a president changeover period. She will talk to the university, and I can expect a response from her anyway in November. I like that. This nightmare would slowly end, and generally in a normal country, this business adventure ends. The Brandenburg Ministry of Education invites me to ask what damages I have suffered, and let me show them our evidence. I agree on the amount of compensation, and later the provincial ministry handling this case with Ungwari and his colleagues as Germans with Germans. But unfortunately, this is Germany, a European country with the darkest past in the world, where even killing a massive amount of people with toxic gas once was an ordinary event. For a dispute to be resolved legally, you have to believe that your case is in a country where the rule of law prevails. But there is no doubt in me that the rule of law does not govern this German republic. 
and I'm already beginning to understand why Ungwari signed the contract with such ease as it contains that in case of a dispute German law should be followed. I had every reason to assume that there are no laws and regulations in Germany, so Ungwari was not afraid of the consequences. And now listen carefully. In 2018, I tried to ask for help from BMBF, you know, the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research, with a new budget of 19 billion euro and led by Anja Karicek, Federal Minister. They actually were in our written agreement as a central point in the obligation list. And in their answer, they told me that the BMBF BF is not responsible for my request and they suggested me to contact the MWFK where I wasn't able to receive an answer since 2017. And what the Bible did say, a good tree can't produce evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree produce good fruit. I never meet such bastards like these Germans in my life. A whole country based on bastard. Not only goodwill does not exist in these Germans, but an elementary school level of goodwill is also missing from them. And I fully understood why Germans are portrayed in an extremely evil way in those Hollywood movies and why a BMW car owner hammered his own BMW car publicly as a protest. And this Ungwari behaved exactly like this because it's their habit, you know, seemingly legal issues. And at the same time, the new president, Yulik Tipe, did not fulfill any of the obligations either, although our contract would only expire by the end of 2018, this Yulik Tipe did not even want to pretend that they were trying to fulfill their obligations under the contract. And could a German business story be even madder? Yes. It's just us awesome and a fake exactly. room. Please, yeah. speak. Thank you. I think Germans always go for for head-on collision, you know, and, and it's it's never it's it doesn't it rarely has sort of grace and melody and rhythm. It's just the. My name is Wang. My friends call me Eric. I'm a private company's owner from Budapest. Since 2010, I have worked together with many European education partners like the Charles University of Prague, South Bohemian University, Zada University, and Education Ministry of Croatia, and many, many others. But what I have experienced from one of our business partners from Germany destroyed all my beliefs in doing business in Europe. Germany, as the leading political and economic power of the EU, took away my time and my money, destroyed my business and my business partners, and my faith in a clean and rule of law Europe. I call all well meaning people to fight with me against this mad and brutal business practices of Germany. From my business story, I hope everyone will learn to think twice before entering a business relationship with any public institution of Germany. From episode 5, you will learn how Germany as the biggest economic power of Europe gives no respect to a written agreement and contractual partners. Please do not eat anything until the end of the video. So from previous episodes you already know in 
2016. I liken it the headquarters of the German University Tietz Wildau to the notorious crime capital city of Juarez. And the ex-president of the German school, Professor Dr. Ungwari, had no problems with that. And instead of starting a negotiation with my company about the termination of the cooperation contract, he claimed that in Germany, legal issues are only seemingly things. But in 2017, out of nothing, he suddenly indicated that a contractual relationship might end because one newly recruited colleague named Claudia had bad feelings about my company. Mutual consent, good faith, seriousness, negotiation, or act by the written agreement were unknown concepts for this German public institution. Moreover, the Brandenburg so-called Ministry of Education and Culture representatives, instead of taking a written contract seriously, they lied into my face with an email where they asked me to wait for their response just for drag time. The tactic was exactly like what Ungwari did with me. And misconduct, mismanagement, breach of study are unknown concepts for Germany. I have seen a lot of crazy people in my life, but I never thought I would find the craziest business partner of my life so far in Germany. I only wanted a business relationship with this country and I took the business as a business. I wanted to receive my contractual rights, but Professor Dr. Uli Tipe, the new president of TH Wildau since 2017, took it something else. The way how this person views a written agreement with a business partner is simply a madhouse case. For her, the written agreement means simply nothing. And Ungwari was right in this aspect. He told me well in advance that if he resigned as president, I would not have a partner, which precisely predicted that a written agreement in the eyes of these Germans would mean nothing. There were no hidden or small characters in my companies and the German public institutions contract. All she needed to do is follow written agreement commitments like mutual consent, communication, and good faith. I have warned her and the ex-president countless times that in a civilized world, reading agreement cannot be breached. In the end, I already felt that this woman wanted to persuade me to release our business story with them from the past years publicly. And against all basic logic, she never invited me as their contractual partner a single time just to solve an existing and real contractual issue. And she knew it well that with publicity, I will destroy this German public institution's reputation to the ground. She doesn't care how many professors work there, how many students study there who may not be involved in any way, but still will suffer the consequence in the end. She, as a professor doctor of Germany, had every opportunity to behave like a civilized business partner with responsibility. And here comes the fact that I'm a big American movie fan because there's a lot of truth in American movies. As usual, the Germans have portrayed there as arrogant, cruel, mad and perverted figures. I was able to experience them all together with my German business adventure. Instead, after Uli Tipe took over this German public institution in 2017, she turned to me immediately to start a negotiation about what to do with the valid written agreement. She started pretending that she had nothing to do with what the previous president had signed. We know from history that Germany wasn't a good partner in fulfilling agreements, just like Volkswagen uses software to cheat on the world. So this professor, Ulrich Tipe, can do whatever she wants. Because I was unable to receive any email response from Ulrich Tipe as a contractual partner of my company, I suspected that she didn't know how to read emails. That's why in 2018, I sent one post mail to their German public institutions president. It was a breach of contract warning notice. In it, I listed out their breaches of the agreement and I claimed with a half 
5 million euro compensation, I may terminate the contract with them as mutual consent. This is the exactly the amount which I should have received already in 2015. If their ex-president Ungwari hadn't lied to me, finally I have received a response by postman from Ulik Dipe. In it, Ulik, without any question, without a single apology about why she was unable to reply to my emails since 2017, and without a single indication that we, as civilized contractual partners, should act by the contract and with a personal negotiation, we can clarify our disagreements. She wrote this: the demands of 500,000 euro is rejected because there is no legal basis to support your demand and the requirement. Is missing any basis in fact. There is no breach of contract, and she was so nice that she even had time to inform me that she accepted my termination of the contract dated November 5 of 2014. It was understandable, right? You asked them to pay a breach of agreement compensation, and you may terminate the contract with them. And their answer was they accepted your termination. I don't know what made Ulik Tibe professor and doctor, but from the aspect of playing a bastard, this Ulik was really good. From that moment, I knew that I'm not facing a European country, but with a mad and ruthless old Germany. After failing to start a negotiation with this president Ulik in 2018, and because the Brandenburg Ministry doctor Nico shamelessly deceived me, and after the The German Federal Minister Anja K did not recognize the agreement. I knew public city would be the only solution to solve my problems with this mad and brutal Germany. With my newly established Twitter account, I signaled to various figures such as local German political leaders. Of course, I also reported to the city mayor of Wildau, who allegedly now is under investigations because of. Corruption, and I also signaled to German newspapers, and I still made some reports to the federal minister Anja K. Despite that, the aberrant and ignoring mentality of this Germany was brutal. I still have the hope that this Germany will only behave like a brutal madness up to a limit. But beyond that limit, they will notice themselves. But it didn't happen that way. My story, as if it were normal. In Germany, German state-funded institution broke a written agreement. Corruption doesn't matter. So in 2019, I made a three-minute video about the previous year's events, and I had already strongly indicated what a terrible scam we have suffered from Germany. And my private company was a victim of the representatives of this country. I posted this video on the Th Wilders Twitter site. I seriously. They hope that this would make them aware, and the madness reached the maximum point. Because it is their fault that a contractual partner could not even find a way to communicate with their German business partner. I had no reason to believe that Germany is a rule of law country. Their representatives gave a promise in writing yesterday and forgot about it tomorrow. In this country, not only verbal agreements have no effect, but Reading agreement neither. How will you arrange your issues with a country like this? And actually, I look after corruption cases in Germany, and from big companies to the German police system, I saw corruption cases everywhere. Then I already knew, or I would give up my fight and accept that I was scammed by a German public institution, or I have to use public city to fight against them. I have children, and I have a. Family, I may be facing a much worse enemy than a criminal organization, but I'm definitely a fight for my justice until.
feel my last breath type person. After all, which public institution could claim that everything was within the legal frame when they sent several emails to you like, will there be money if you come and how much? But these Germans are as brutal as I would have never doubted before. I dare to say that the same case, if it had happened in another African regime, they would have been open to solve the dispute with negotiation. And I had to draw up the conclusion that Uli is a mad person because when I present all this information to her, institutions, social media, what happened? She blocked my Twitter account. She simply did not want to understand why a business partner said they scammed him. Aberrant, ignorant and without any self-control. This is a contractual partner of German public institution. And then I knew that this Germany harmed me permanently. I started to feel bad every time I saw a made in Germany product or German company or anything which connected to Germany. It reminded me of this brutally mad German public institution. A couple of months later, one night when I was watching TV with my family, I saw on my phone that an email came from a German lawyer. At first, I thought they finally realized that it was too crazy to scam a contractual business partner. And finally, they realized that showing respect to a business partner and a written agreement is the only way to solve this dispute. But when I read into the lines, it turned out that they wanted to threaten me with a law firm from Berlin. They claimed that if I don't remove all the negative messages in social media about their German public institution, I will pay it very badly. I felt like I'm the French family father, Mr. Lapetit, in the Inglorious Bastards. Sorry. I might add also that any information that makes a performance of my duty easier will not be met with punishment. Actually, quite the contrary. It will be met with reward. And that reward will be your family will cease to be harassed in any way by the German military during the rest of our occupation of your country. They had no interest to know why a seven years business partner yelled publicly that they had been scammed by a German state-funded institution. Just like because they are one state-funded institution of Germany, it proves that they are innocent as a lamb. Then I remember it back that at least when I described to Ungwari that his weirdo is like a crime capital city of Guares. At least Ungwari was honest with me. He didn't say he refused. It was an exaggeration. He wanted me to know that they are not afraid of crime. Uli Tipe hired a law firm from the Chinese town of Berlin to terrorize me and my family. And maybe this Berlin law firm girl feared that I may still not fear the German bad fate enough. In the end, they added that we should not publish this letter because they wrote this threat directly to me. Can you understand the logic? A public institution of Germany hired a lawyer to coerce you to accept the losses with you and they forbid you to make it public. I really don't understand why the TH Wildo as a German public institution didn't send me a fish as in the Godfather's scene. Wouldn't that be more efficient? What the hell is this? That's a Sicilian message. It means Luca Brasi sleeps with the fishes. Understandably, a country where once killing million people with toxic gas was watched by people there as it was normal, a state institution in Germany may not be better than that. Self-control, civility, respect, goodwill, good faith meant nothing for them. In my reply letter, I described that I have evidence against them and I have good reason to report them to the police, just not the police of Germany, because Germany 
company as a whole lost my trust. And if they want to know what they did in the previous years, we can discuss it in Budapest. I really thought this was the last of the last point of this wild and brutal mad story. I bet that this love film will surely advise Udik Pipe that actually they would do better if they stop bullying their business partner. But this Germany not by chance received the title of the mad brute. The madness of this country is endless. Few months later, I received a letter from the German police of Konigs Usterhausen, only one two kilometers from TH Wilda, and it turned out that Professor Dr. Ulrich Tipe went there and reported that I'm blackmailing their German state-funded institution. And the very good reason for Ulrich was she received my email where I informed her that I'm ready to release our business debate publicly if she still refuses to talk with us as their contractual partners. But I bet that she did not mention that I contacted Ungwari, her and other vice presidents of TH Wilder since 2016, even through MWFK and BMBF, just to resolve this contractual issue. But they just didn't react or lied the whole time. And now I warn her that the business debate may be released publicly. She immediately learned how to read an email and set it as blackmail. I just cannot understand how a country could be so mad and aberrant and it is their duty to talk and negotiate with their contractual business partners. But one thing I know well, I didn't regret it at all that I have described DH Vildo to Juarez Cartel. I think they are even worse than that. I have heard opinions from British people that they would rather die than stay in a European Union where Germany is the leader. And at that moment, I did not understand why they say things like this. But now I understood everything. I can't imagine how sick this German society could be if such a madhouse figure like Ulrich Tipe could run one entire German state-funded institution only 50 kilometers from Berlin and I could only guess why I have to suffer so badly from this brutal Germany. Perhaps despite Chancellor Merkel visiting China a lot, which seemed like she is a friend of Chinese culture and Chinese people, actually contained concise and inexhaustible hatred. And in fact, the government of Germany and its institutions hate Chinese people. After all, once the great leader of Germans, Adolf Hitler, said that the Japanese and the Chinese consider it honorary Aryan people and maybe somehow they saw a kind of rival in Chinese and as their enemy. And my second idea is that they hate Americans because I have warned the German federal minister that if they continue to play the bully, I will refer our case to the US authorities, including the Berlin ambassador Richard Greiner. There is also a good chance of this being defeated by the Americans and they hate America for they were unable to rule the world. I know people from Wilda who openly claim that they have never seen one American movie and they are not friends of America. So my third idea is that they hated the ex-president Ungwari himself and with him they might have negative feelings towards Hungarians so they forced me to release the story of Ungwari even if their public institution will also suffer big and in vain I heard so much from Hungarians that how they helped Germans a lot during the Cold War. In fact, they are not fed with positive emotions towards Hungarians, but I'm sure that what Ulrich Tipe is doing is approved by the German Federal Minister Anja Galice and also by the Brandenburg Education Ministry because they are well informed about this business dispute. With no more human reason, I can in no way comprehend that the head of a German state institution starts to behave in such a beastly way with one contractual business partner.
the reputation of a German public institution, the land of Brandenburg and even Germany meant nothing for this professor Uli Dippe. Of course, maybe she doubt there is no reputation left for this Germany, so she had nothing to lose. Your BMW, which are most reliable? Well, actually, she said, which are least reliable <laughs> these days? I would say the least reliable of all those three would be Audi, and then I would say it's really a toss up. BMW is the second least reliable, and Mercedes is the third. BMW and Mercedes are pretty close together, they both have lots of reliability problems as they age, and both are extremely expensive to repair and very complex to figure out what's wrong with them. So, I mean, I wouldn't buy any of those three, I'll tell you that right now. Uli Tipe, as the president of TH Wildo, even had time and goodwill to sue me in a private lawsuit in one of the Hamburg's courts just to stop me saying that they are a corrupt and contract breacher institution. Yet how much German taxpayers' money could she have saved if she had just asked me once do I have evidence against them? And the Hamburg court of Germany, interestingly, without hurting the defendant, urgently in some respects made the resolution that what I was claiming was false and ordered me not to say so. Or a uh, 250,000 euro fine will be waiting for me. I don't know if it has anything to do with reporting my case to the world's number one democracy, the United States of America, but at least Germany's Hamburg court did not make a decision to put me into jail for years long just because I have been scammed by their German public institution. And out of curiosity, I wrote to Teach Wilder Chancellor Mr. Thomas Lehne several times and I wanted to know how much German taxpayers money had been spent on lawyers just to harass me and my family and no answers came. I even sent a biblical quote to Mr. Lehne. I hoped it would enlighten them that actually they are a public institution in the European Union and transparency is not a bad thing. Although I run a small company, I know that in the event of a dispute, I must first meet with my contractual partners because this is one basic contractual obligation to treat each other in good faith. But thanks to Professor Ulrich Tipe, this business dispute went directly to court and police in Germany without one single negotiation between my company and TH Wildau as contractual partners. I wonder what kind of partner can be the one who refused to listen to you and does not want to negotiate with you but has entered into a contractual relationship with you. I think in the whole world it is called fraud and Germany market my word, you will pay hard for this mad and brutal behavior. And don't forget, there is nothing personal in this story, it's only business. But I will never be able to be a friend of your country, Germany. And the story is still not over. <laughs>